Okay, now we should be live. I'll just send the link to Martin here. Uh, let me just let me just see if we are live here. Okay, now we yep. should. All right, we are live. Nice. Let me just, yeah, so let me first start off by uh, welcoming everybody in the chat. I don't, uh, I can't, I mean, let me open up the chat in another window because uh, for some reason uh, OBS doesn't show me the chat. Oops, not that video, but let me just. Uh, Okay, uh, yeah, hello, hello guys. Um, the chat won't have a live replay after the stream uh, has ended. So uh, let me just put it here. So it won't have a live replay. Uh, that's that, that's because I want uh, you guys to, to don't be shy to, to communicate everything uh, and uh, just, uh, yeah, just go with the flow. Okay, so first let me start by introducing our special guest today. For the first time on my channel, I have a, I have a really important guest, uh, a great friend of mine, uh, a man that like uh, won so many competitions, I can't even count them. But this is Martin Dinov. Uh, and he is, from, he is from Macedonia as well. Uh, he, uh, he's a master on code forces or has been for a long time. Uh, and he has been what twice on the IOI. Now he's coach on the Macedonian team. He has won multiple uh, code full championships. Uh, he beat beats me every time. I have rarely beat him uh, on on competitions. Um, he has what uh, now? Now you are working uh, a little bit for the faculty as well, and you are coaching the Macedonian team. Tell us something. Tell us something interesting. Did you leave anything for me to introduce? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. I mean, uh, uh, so we didn't say that I'm fourth year at university now, a bachelor's, and yeah. Let's see yeah, this is gonna be today. So yeah, yeah, and also I want to mention the the as well the uh, we're gonna take a back take a look back at 2022. But you have two great achievements in 2022, as far as I know, with the with some of Macedonian guys. Let the, uh, let me uh, I will let you mention them uh, about I Triple and ACM if you can just uh, tell us something more. Yeah, it was. It was no, it wasn't the first ACM, it was our second participation, but with this team with Blagoic and Andre, it was our first collaboration on ACM this year, mm -hmm. where we scored eighth place in the Southeastern European Regional Contest. That, that's an and excellent also, achievement. And, and it was really fun. Um, the other one was at IEEE with Blagoic and with Peter, where I don't remember the results, but we did well. We did good as well. Yeah, it was like 14th place in the world. So it was really well. Uh, yeah, you solved a lot of problems there. But uh, of course, uh, you and Blagoviće are masters. And Peter is specialist or something as well. I'm a candidate now. Yeah, I mean, but 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 I believe I believe you, uh, your knowledge is well above uh, candidate master. Uh, okay, so let's let's uh, let us go back to 2022. I want to mention uh, that there was this blog post uh, three weeks ago about favorite problems in 2022, and I actually commented um, on another blog post, but it got deleted. The blog post got deleted, so uh, I have I don't have the comments right here, but I can pull up the my favorite problems of 2022. Just uh, so we we gonna mention we're gonna mention some like honorable mentions of, of problems because I believe problem setting is a very important skill and Martin has some problems set for 
uh, for the regionals in Macedonia, as far as I remember, right? Yes. It was the regionals or the... It was the regionals, right? The schools, the regionals, the national... I, yeah, you, I you, so you have set that. for the nationals as, as well, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay, okay, so that's cool. That's, that's really great. Um, and okay, so uh, favorite problems I would mention, I would first, man I would first mention that uh, I, I love this site Kenku, uh, I'm, I'm mentioning it all the time. It's a site where you can take a look at what problems you have solved on AdCoder specifically. Uh, or on some like uh, uh, the Japan Olympiad in informatics or something like that. But, uh, but I would mention uh, this problem, union of two sets, as one of my favorite, if not my favorite problem of 2022. Because of the, because of the, somehow uh, the problem is created so that it teaches you about a specific data structure and this data structure is a sparse table. And we're not going to, uh, really talk about sparse tables today because we have planned for to, to solve us to solve some problems but i would mention this as as one of my favorite problems if not the favorite that uh that like in 2022 do you have some favorite problem i don't know about favorite but there is one which i quite like okay can you send me the link okay Unique occurrences. Oh yes, this, this was one of my favorite problems as well. I, I actually mentioned this in the blog. Uh, we can we can tell the tell tell people what was the problem about. Do you want to tell? Uh, do you want to explain it or? Um, it, for uh, how do I go about it? Well, in the problem, we need, we are given a tree, a graph as a tree, and we need to find for every simple path in that tree, say a simple path goes from node A to node B, or U and V as they are stated in the problem. Yes. So if you have a simple path going from U to V, you give a score to that path. Uh, the number of values that appear exactly once on the edges on that path, on that simple path between U and V. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So... And then, the task statement is to calculate the sum of all the scores of f of u of v over all pairs of vertices. You have the problem open, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have the problem open. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can, you can, put, yeah, you can. Uh, I can share the screen, but if I share now this screen twice, it will lag a little bit because, and I, don't, I, th that's why I don't really want to. But maybe you can just open the stream because yeah, the stream is still on Adcoder. Uh, oh, the stream lags. Okay, okay. I mean, yeah. So I'm, so, I'm not seeing your screen live as they are. Uh, let me let me just try and share the screen here and see if if uh, that would be. I mean, do you see it right now? I'm seeing it. Yes. Okay. Okay. So. Um, yeah, we we need to to count the the, the this sum of uh, these functions uh, on 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 every single path, and I did I think we both competed on this contest, and I did not. I don't know. Yeah, I. No. Oh, I yeah yeah yeah, so we solved it through through to f. Uh, to, through D and then uh, yes F uh, here it was a nice contest but I then I then I then solved it uh, on the way the the same way like tourists solved it but I don't know what was your solution uh, if you can maybe if you want to explain uh, your approach for the problem <laughs> let me remember it as well. I see, I see you are... Mm. 
I mean, that's a that's quite a small solution here. I I heard that this problem actually was mentioned in in an ACM talk uh, in about uh, b b before the start of the US nationals and it was mentioned that this problem could be solved with a link cut tree data structure if you know uh, the data structure I don't and I mean my solution is is just different but I someday I would maybe try to solve it with the link cut tree because link cut trees are kind of cool as well but they're hard to implement and really like not really intuitive structures in my solution what i'm doing is i calculate for every edge in how many pairs it will be counted so a contribution technique yeah this is now nice to mention something about the contribution technique if you want for like beginners so, um, as well the problem statement asks to find the sum for a given path or the number of values that appear exactly once for a given path yeah well now since in the final result we have a sum of every single possible path the value for every single possible path then that means for every individual edge it will be counted once or once it will be counted in some of the paths going through it. Let's say for this edge, it would be counted somewhere along this, either this guy, path that enters here like that, somewhere or like uh, that. In some other path, yeah, where that, the value which is on that edge doesn't appear. Yeah, else so if, the, if there's like 10, uh, on which path, uh, let's say that uh, this value does not uh, appear. Okay. Yeah. So how do you handle this? Uh, instead of, uh, yeah, we, I reformulated the problem. Instead of calculating the, the value, how many number of, uh, yeah, the number of values that appear exactly once on the edges on a path from U to V, I instead calculate for every single edge how many paths are there going through it, which contain the value of the edge exactly once. Uh, sorry, sorry. Can you repeat that once more? I just got okay. Can you can you repeat that? Uh, you you reformulate the problem like. So the original problem asks us to calculate the sum for every possible path. Yeah. The number of unique values on that path. Yes, this okay. is what we want. And every value then, if it's unique, it counted exactly once in this sum. Uh, yes. Right, yes. So this ten, if it's if it's if it's the only ten on a certain path, it will be counted exactly once in this final sum on the right yes well so instead of calculating all of this fuv the the function values mm -hmm. i will just count how many times this happens how many times the number 10 is contributing to some of these fuv values okay 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 and like how do you handle this uh, yep that is the number of paths passing through 10 which do not contain another 10, right? It, need to, it needs yeah. to be a unique value appearing exactly one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and from here on to achieve that, I mm, I look in the subtree below the node, below the lower of the nodes of uh, the edge with this value. Mm -hmm. So this subtree, yep. let's say. Yeah, and in this subtree, I cut out all of the recursive subtrees, which are connected to their parent by a edge with the same value 10. Mm -hmm. So if here was a 10, like I would cut this here. Yes. Okay. So this would mean that there are only two 
nodes on the bottom side which can be chosen as a potential yes uh, yes so so that going through this page yes so the there would the be there would all of the paths would either start from here go through 10 somewhere end or starts from here go to trans to 10 somewhere end yeah yes okay so yes so would you would have on the left side some value and here i suppose you're doing for the right side as well mm, oh yes uh, or you are calculating it somehow right um because then if i have for the right side then the multiplication of the left and the right side is the combination between these is the number of paths that satisfy the condition right so if I have now for the left side two, and let's say the right side has all of them, doesn't allow 10 to go through, like doesn't have anywhere 10, then it would be what, uh, five, right? Then mm, yeah. the answer would be 10. Two nodes times five nodes on the right, yep. yeah, 10. Um, but my question is like, uh, how do you cut out uh, a tree? Uh, do you for each value uh, store uh, how many nodes you have seen under? With like how many nodes you have not seen with that value? Yes, so... No, at every point I am calculating. No, not calculate. I have memorized at every point. When does... Uh, can I draw? Yeah, 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 sure, sure. Let me just, uh, let me just somehow handle the, the screen share. Yeah, you can draw, but, uh, uh, how, uh, to share the, this? Yeah, yes. Let me just try. Um, as well, can I? Can I? Did you do it? Yeah, you can't see it or what? Because this is from the university, so do you have... But anyone with this link can edit it. It takes me to your OneNote rather than here. Yeah, it should take... Wait, to my OneNote? Yeah. But you can... It's in Quick Notes, right? It's in it's in CP. It's in CP the last one. I mean you can we can just make something else but it's loading. I think so for those who jo who are joining in right now, uh this is Martin. He's uh, we're we're taking a look at one problem, which it, which was um, the last problem of a division two round. We both did not solve it during the round, but it was one one of my favorite and Martin's pro favorite problem of the twenty twenty two, and uh, it it talks about the uh, the uh, the calculating this function here, where this f of u v is the function of the values of the unique values on some edge on some path from u to v uh, the I'm count my, it doesn't appear at your, at uh, your what where are you drawing though you're drawing yeah, the bottom. you're drawing at the bottom no i don't see oh, it are you sure that like Yep, and it says that it's. Oh, I don't know what it says. It's not in English. Uh, what does it say? <laughs> you, you you can tell me probably. I'll tell you. Uh, oh, it says they saved something. It's saved. Um, okay, it's not appearing at your page. Then we can share the whiteboard instead. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can share the the. I will I will try to to figure out how to do it with now the OBS here. Maybe I could do like another screen capture, like display capture, and then I could do like. Okay, uh, can you text me your email in chat? Uh, wait, did I just, did I just leak my link? Wait. How can I, how can I? It's just, I, just wait wait I will just set up some password just so okay uh, my my email why why do you need my email because my organization doesn't allow sharing with anyone it has to be a specific person okay try that let me just let me just try to here to make your screen I mean I I can I can draw it as well but just uh, maybe it will be easier for you to to explain it Yeah uh Uh huh. Let me try like this. But I, I I don't think it will it would allow if your organization doesn't allow with somebody else. It's it's a it's a little bit it's a little bit pain that organizations limit this uh, kind of like it limits to internal structures internal emails. I don't know. It makes it it makes it hard to communicate. We have the same problems here. Like, if someone from uh, probably from another university wants, it just it won't. Um, it won't allow it. But also, yeah, this problem is is uh, is a favorite of, of mine as well because of the. Try um, this. Okay, let me just see. Okay. I think I am in. Let me. Oh, there's something. You don't have permission to access this whiteboard. Yeah, only users who uh. are within the organization. Yeah, okay. But I mean, there are uh, sharing services online, right? Like. Uh, some whiteboard sharing thing online without there's a link, there's a link which I just sent you. Yeah, I tried that one. That one was was the you don't have permission to access this whiteboard. Yeah, everything that has to do with our university is just the, don't doesn't work. No, it's not university. This is my private Oh this is your your private um I don't know but I'm I'm it's weird how you you how you couldn't access I don't know it doesn't matter um I, I yeah try, try to explain it so so I can draw something like uh, okay so you you save for each note uh, what do you do exactly let me just take a look at the code as well it's not for the notes, it's for the edge values. Ah, okay, for I the edge values. The tree, 
yeah, as I'm traversing the tree, mm -hmm. I remember what is the last uh, node which has this this edge value towards towards the parent. Uh, okay, so, so yeah, okay. If, I... if I can indicate a tree, say with values 10, 5, 6, 7, somewhere, then I would remember for all of these values what is the nearest node moving in the uh, up direction which mm -hmm. has this value. So then when I meet another edge with this value, I subtract to the node above the size of the subtree below. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, 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 yeah, yeah. I, I, I think, I think, yeah, yeah. You make, you make sense. You make sense to me. So, for example, let me just, let me just here do something like this. Maybe, maybe like this. Something. And then when you, so when you traverse the tree, the tree you remember for this node. Let's say you re you remember that for ten, for the value of ten, you have uh, this node here, right? And yeah, give it a name. Uh, what should I name this node? Like A. A. Yeah, sure. Here's and the so I remember as I'm traversing the tree. I remember that for the value in ten, the nearest node with this value connecting it to its parent is the node a yeah so okay and then you will wait what the okay so what's then when happening? i meet another 10 somewhere down wait, the line just just a moment because okay so when when you meet when you meet uh, now here the this 10 here you go you go in the tree right so you traverse here let's say there's no 10 you go uh, here and you meet 10 now here again so when i'm done traversing that other 10 when i know that it has five edges in its subtree mm -hmm. no, five edges. it has five nodes in its subtree yes yep uh after i count these five nodes then i tell the node above then but, you, uh, you then you step now when you're calculating the value for how many paths pass how many ah, yeah how, how many that. how many paths that uniquely contain this node 10 uh you just let's say pass pass at a right minus equals pass at uh, now this current uh current size of the subtree right because you're here if if i if i correctly so yeah so it makes sense it makes total sense why would you do that yeah and it's uh, a linear solution yeah it's a linear solution it's uh, quite simple and to deal with the root i just attach every possible mm, every possible edge weight <laughs> to above the root oh so you at, you attach <laughs> okay that's a that's another trick into into the the things if you if you want to deal with some edge case you can just make like an exi no, you, you, you're you're what, what? No, I, I don't even no. create the nodes you, you, you're even create the nodes in just this value on the right side which says the nearest uh, node with value 10 is a so for the nearest for value, I would remember the root as the nearest. Yeah, so you're doing this. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I mean uh it's uh yeah, it's kinda cool. It's cool solution, yeah. it's uh it's a simple one. And actually that that contest was, was pretty good, right? I mean if we have solved yeah. through D all of the problems. Uh, it was it's, it was good. I think it's the first contest where I attempted the last problem, and I actually had a solution, but it just. <laughs> it just yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, de uh, definitely, definitely. This uh, uh, this problem unique occurrences and union of two sets for someone who wants uh, about to wants to learn about uh, the the sparse uh, table data structure definitely it's um it's a must problem 
because I won't go into the problem, but it's simply just to just to implement a sparse table, and that's that's the pretty much. Problems will be in the description. Uh, yeah, yeah, we we will put the, the in the description. Yeah, also, also maybe, also maybe there are cool problems. Like I've seen, I've seen cool problems from ACM. I just don't uh, maybe right now to to pick to pick a problem. But there were cool problems in ACMs, and I triple had some cool problems as well. I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, it it was good year for practice. There, my my biggest problem with like cold forces was that it is just now so much. The problems are just so much more heavy sight on like casework maybe. It's. There are rarely uh, there are rarely these beautiful one-liner problem. There is just much more test, much more cases involved, much 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 more case work than it needs to be. I don't know. Like I I I I mean, there are good problems. The same impression. I don't know, like. <laughs> Whenever I go to add coder, the problems are just seem more seem more technical and mathematical than just case work or just finding a trick or finding small small things. And what I've learned over like the over the the year on cold forces is that like you just have to you just the mo the biggest advice I would give for anyone is just like you have to look at the most simple thing you can probably think of for some problem like some basic stupid idea stupid um how do i say pattern some stupid pattern that you can find and like it's always either a pattern with like where let's say let's say you you have some problem and then you you just you want to look first at what happens if like all of the values are the same or let's say there are like zeros or some constructive problem let's say if there's there was there were constructive problems and in most of the time you just had to look had to construct some sequence where it contained only two numbers let's say and it was always constructible in this way and it's it's not about now knowing many algorithms or many techniques it's more about just finding patterns and that's maybe what i don't like in cold force and that's why i chose at colder for for today's maybe practice uh because at colder seems to have this more technical technical problems yeah mm -hmm. yeah um yeah, we can we can choose a random problem which I haven't solved on Adcoder because I don't want to. Also, also partial XOR enumeration was one of my favorite problems, but it wasn't from this year. I think if was it was it in twenty twenty two or was it the first? Actually, yeah, yeah, it was it was the last contest of twenty twenty two, as far as I remember. XOR enumeration was was a really cool problem. Maybe we should pick up a pick out a, a random problem here. Go ahead. Should like I know I know one problem like security cameras with some max flow, but I I don't know if I should pick a max flow problem. I mean I don't know if that's a max flow though. Yeah, probably it is, because I know I know previously I I was looking at the max flow problem, but let's say let's say, like random. I, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, like, but is it is it is it uh, fair to start with some easier problem? No, if you're picking at random, then you're giving it way too much time. Uh, yeah, but like I don't know, like because I don't want to pick a, a very difficult problem, or, or I don't want to pick very easy problem. Mm, keep connect. 
it's probably a graph problem. Oh yeah, like you see, you see some problem like this. When you see a problem like this, it's a, it's, it's a, it's some kind of um, either like a DP problem or just. I mean, and I don't want to solve this. Like, I mean, find the number of ways modulo. It's just a pattern. It's just, it's just a, it's just a pattern. You have to find the pattern. What happens with, like, with like because the graph is just so specific. And and I I just don't want to solve some 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 problem like this. It just doesn't it it isn't fun. It it's not a fun problem, right? Uh, consider a graph for each. Okay, th this is telling me how the graph is constructed, and then find the well to remove exactly i of the. So yeah, for each integer i, you want to find the number of ways to remove some i edges so that the graph is still connected. And now it's probably some kind of divide and conquer or something. DP. I don't know. It's not a fun problem. I don't know. Also, also it it kind of it kind of reminds me of some like enumeration problem of like but it's 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 simple dp there's no symmetrical things here just it should be combinatorics right uh, no, I won't solve it. I, I mean, it's not a fun problem for the stream. Let's pick some other problem. Uh, first of all, let me just look at the chat because I don't see the chat. Uh, yeah, thank you for like uh, that. I, I think it's fine right now. Let me just, okay. Okay, let's pick another problem. Shortest good path. Easy, some easy problem. Isn't that an F problem? Yes, it's an F problem. Wait, how do you determine whether it's an easy or not? I don't know, like here it says difficult is 1600. I mean, it may not be easy problem, but... I mean, it's, it's still like 2 to the N. Some oh, brute force problem. Oh, I remember this one. I remember. I remember discussing this one with uh, Bayaktarov. I remember it somehow, and it it was like a DP. Just uh, I know. I know this problem. I just uh, wait. Wait. Like I, I. I need. I need to pick some problem that I don't know. Like from here somewhere, rush hour two. Some problem that I. I don't know. Should we solve this one? Or what do you think? If you let me read the problem. Okay. <laughs> I will read it Why as not? well. Like maybe let's solve this. Can you send me the link? Hmm? Send me the link. Alright. Okay. It's easier for me to read it like that. Okay. So there is some, let me just uh, zoom in because people on the stream probably can't see much. Let me just do this, okay. So you're given some graph and there is rush hour in the country uh, that peaks at time zero. If you start going through road I at time T, it will take some cost which is associated with the road plus di oh okay this is the cost where it's associated again through the road but it has something to do with time uh, okay so this should be a dijkstra problem right Uh, can it be a can it would the green strategy like Dijkstra work here? I'm still reading it.
I don't know. I don't know because I'm because because T T uh, here T when it goes up, this goes down. So the the whole uh, so for for those in the stream watching, uh, there is this equation which actually corresponds to the through the cost of the edge, and it actually is based on time. So. If I can, I can just mention. I can. Can I? Can I mention a couple of things about Dijkstra? And there is actually a new paper. I don't know if you have read uh, read a new paper on the shortest uh, path algorithm with negative edges, which is uh, now a linear time algorithm for first time. It's no longer the Belmont Fort. Uh, yeah. So like they actually designed. If I can just for a for a cool off topic thing. Um, so, uh, I mean, it's not off topic, it's still like Dijkstra, we know that Dijkstra takes uh, always the, the smallest cost. And um, if you have something like a negative edge, uh, you, you, could, you could first take negative some... Negative look, you mean? Uh, no, 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 I'm, I'm thinking about um, negative value if you have a negative loop let's say if you have like some negative loop here uh, then you could just uh, go forever here and it the cost would go to a minus negative minus infinity right but let's say let's say you have you don't have a negative loop but if you have negative values dijkstra doesn't work because you can take first like you can take some edge with some smaller value and then get stuck and again, and then like uh, like if I had here some bigger value, maybe it would have been more. Uh, it would have been better to take this bigger value and then take this smaller value. And just Dijkstra breaks on the complexity of the algorithm because no longer it's just greedy. Uh, but they what they did, what they cleverly did is uh, now now we have some. I don't I don't know exactly the complexity of the algorithm. But what I know is that what they did is they broke down the graph on clusters of nodes where there's no negative edges. And then like, or there is like just one negative edge or something like a small number of negative edge. So you have like clusters of nodes where there are very few negative edges compared to the, to the, uh, to the, the whole cluster size and then what they did is um, is when you have like these clusters of nodes they're connected through some edges ca that can be negative uh, but they constructed some algorithm that actually uh, converts this graph this whole graph here converts it into a, a DAC so uh, directed acyclic graph and with a directed acyclic graph because there are no cycles we can just every directed acyclic graph can be imagined uh, with the topological ordering like this so some topological ordering and then even if you have like negative weights on on this uh, DAC you can solve this problem in linear time the shortest path problem and it's actually quite clever, but it does. Uh, so if you have like negative loops, this breaks down because they they can't find if a graph has negative loops. I think as far as I read in the paper, but it seems really cool that now we have some complicated linear time algorithm that actually finds the shortest path with even negative loop with negative values. But however, uh, this is more of a theoretical uh, thing. Here, let me just see if someone uh, on YouTube. Uh, okay, so this is more this more uh, theoretical idea. But do you have any ideas for the for our current problem? Not yet. And you? Mm, no, I'm 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 thinking I'm thinking. Uh, I'm thinking is Dijkstra 
possible? Or is... How do you even go and prove that Dijkstra is possible in this case? So you want to take an edge with like the the cost here? When time passes, this will be better. But if I can't, if I can't come to this edge with like some better time, then why would I? Oh, so you can wait. Uh, oh, you see this? You you, you see what's the problem? Uh, you can wait here. You can wait in some cycle, right? Yeah, Is it? I, you can in a single node. You, 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 wait, you can wait in a single node as well? In, in any single node. So wait, I, I then 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 it's it's clear. Then isn't it clear <laughs> uh, that I can wait infinite time for every single node? Oh, but then then yeah, then, then actually yeah, then actually the cost is the time that I can wait yeah. So can I binary search? Uh, maybe the answer. How would you do that? Yeah, that's a weird. Mm. Well, in Dixra, we arrive at the node in a certain time. In any case, we want to arrive to every node as early as possible. Okay, but now leaving this node to another node through some edge with cost C and decay D. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it pays out to wait before starting. Say the decay cost, the decay value for some path is 100. Then it's much more efficient to wait for 10 seconds and then go. Because it's going to cost only 10 rather than 100. Yes. Yes. Is there a constant way, uh, a way of constant complexity for us to check what is the optimal wait time? Uh -huh. So for each, uh, so when you when you arrive a node to check what is the optimal wait time you need to do in this node. Well, the problem for me, the problem is like the time here. Yeah, probably there is, right? Because we want to to, to minimize this, but still re refine that. Is that going to be T plus this function? Yes. Okay, write that down and let's see what we get. So it's what what the cost of the of some coming to some node will be the cost of getting to this node plus uh, Can you write about what U V R that we have an edge from U to V with cost C and D. Yeah. Let's say let's say like this. So we have edge because we have edge from costs from U and to V, and then we have from the distances. Okay, is that is it is it like this? Cost from cost. 
Uh, what? What did you? That edge has also CNV, not CNV, CND. Uh, no, I will just say like this C uh, from. Oh yeah, that edge is like yeah. Okay, I can. I see. I see. Like it has. Can can we do this? C and D. Okay. So it it is C. This is a constant, right? And then you have. Um, then you have D. Over. And uh, this time uh, is given at what? At time t. So this is at cost u plus one. Okay, plus t plus t. Plus t down there and plus t to the right. Uh, so, uh huh, you want here? To, well, to the right side. Here, plus t? Yeah, but also down there, plus t plus one. Uh huh, so you want like this. But, but why, why plus, plus t? Uh huh, you're adding some, some t wait time. This is wait time, right? Yep. That's why I added it to the right side as well. Okay. And then what do you get here? Great. If we can just calculate the optimal value here for t, we choose this path. Okay, but isn't this... So how you, you calculate the optimal value for, let's say you binary search over t weight, right? To get the minimum... Do we have to search? Mm, what is the optimal value here if you don't binary search? Well, you want to make t weight is increasing while d over cos t plus one plus t weight is decreasing. Yes, and... but there's this floor function. Okay, we're looking for the first point when t weight becomes greater than d over cos t plus one plus t weight. Yeah, so we want t weight to become greater. than this right maybe i don't know but can we afford any research here why not it's a logarithm time it's logarithm time. is already okay i mean we can afford binary search the problem is yeah like yeah, I mean, we can afford binary search, why not? Okay, then we just need to prove that this can work in the Dijkstra. That A, we would... Um, we want to arrive at each node as early as possible. This holds because in each node we can wait any time we need in case we would want to arrive later. Yes. Yes, but this whole cost here is yes it's it's already in some way when we, move, when we move outside from one node we want to arrive at the neighboring nodes as early as possible and with this formula we get the time when we arrive at the neighboring nodes yes yes so this formula actually doesn't change the way It's still greedy. It's still, it's still, but we're just modifying this value here. It doesn't change anything about how we get this cost view. Still, still, it should work, right? And, and because because this t weight is gonna be here positive. there won't be a chance of making anything negative here right we can look we can go to the path we can wait and yeah yeah so i mean this should work this should work just binary search over over this should we implement it or you want to first maybe to 
I'm thinking about this binary research. Aha, uh -huh, you want to solve this thing in, in constant time. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, I'm, I, I don't know about this floor. I mean, it can be probably solved in constant time. If, if, I, if I remove this floor function here, and I say, okay, t weight is like, what? Uh, the weight is times this. Now, if if this were if this was a competition, I wouldn't try to solve it because I already have a solution that will work. It will pass in the time constraints. Yes. There's no point in you spending more time. Yes, exactly, exactly, um, exactly, exactly. There's no point. Sometimes there is because spending a little bit more time thinking will result in a much cleaner implementation, which will take a way shorter than usual. Yeah. But imagine if we got the if if we got a fine formula for this. So we could just write one line in the code rather than, I don't know how many lines are required for a binary search. Yeah, yeah. Still still, still here we can mention that because of the Luckily, floor... It's not too many for binary search, so we can... Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but we can mention that the, because of the floor function, uh, we, can, we can actually a little bit brute force this weight, right? If I get the weight here, and then I can just go and like up and down a little bit and it won't it won't be diff different by two or something like that right is that even correct i think it should be because the floor function can not never can never change the results by more than one greater than d over t plus t um but I, I I would just go and binary search that because it's much easier. Okay. Should we implement it or should we go to? Uh, I don't know how is chat feeling about this. Can 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 we get some responses from chat uh, while we we while we chat a little bit? <laughs> uh, also, I think I think. Okay, I see. I see that. Yeah. Okay, we have some viewers. I can start just coding the this. Let me just. Yeah, my CPU is dying here. Also, I need to open up. Uh, <laughs> also, I need to open up the the competitive workspace here. Yeah, okay, this problem seems seems okay. Integer convex hole. This is kinda cool. Geometry problem. Do you know how to implement convex hole without looking it up, like without looking the Graham scan or whatever algorithm you use? What algorithm do you even use for? For a convex hall. The one where you sort the nodes. Yeah, in many algorithms you do that. Just like how do you sort them? Do you sort them by angle? Or do you sort them by like X coordinate okay. and then just XY. We use that one. XY, okay, okay, okay. And do you like do like you do one upper hole and then one uh, down hole, or you yep. just that that's the okay. one. Okay, okay. I mean, or both together. Yeah. Let me just. Uh... Oh, it's so it's so laggy. It's so laggy. I should change my resolution probably to 1080p when I'm streaming. It just, it doesn't seem nice.
What are these though? Aha, uh -huh, okay, these are the... Whoa, it's laggy. So we have U, V, C and D for each edge. I sometimes do like capital letters, I sometimes don't do capital letters. It's maybe I shouldn't have done so laggy. Do you create uh, vectors usually, or do you create um, do you create just arrays? I would have a vector, a vector, a vector. <laughs> why? Why would you have that? <laughs> well. For every edge, I do not only need to remember the neighbor, I also need to remember the cost and the... Yeah, uh, I can, I can just remember top. here what edge it is, right? Aha, I see. Well, then you don't need a pair there at all. How so? You can just... What do, what do you mean? We can only push the um, index of the edge then. I, I don't understand you. Well, um, line nine, you could have an adjacency, you know, um, that thing inside pair int. In. It's okay. only just one int where you contain the index of the edge. Aha, uh -huh, so uh, yeah, I see, I see. You, you could just index of the edge and then you would need uh, you would need another yep. array to, to keep that. Maybe, maybe it's better, yeah. I mean, it's the same idea, but let's just teach the people how this should be properly done. I mean, this shouldn't, this shouldn't be done like this, but whatever. <laughs> Just, why don't you create an edge though, like struct edge? Okay, let's create struct edge. I don't, I don't like sometimes working with structs that much. Why not? I don't know. It's, I don't know. Cost C and D, right? Then like this, then there would be C and D. It's just now, now we're copying stuff, but whatever. C and D, okay. Now, now there is, um, now it's just Dijkstra, right? What should I remember in Dijkstra? I should remember the cost. And the note. Should I remember the time? Yeah, I should remember the time as well, right? The cost is the time. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The cost is the time. Yeah. Wait, what? How do you call the. Uh, what? The. The priority queue for the extra? I call it always like this. Where I have like the 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 pair. I have like the structure in which I don't know. I don't know what, what is the, the second parameter. <laughs> the third parameter is the comparator. I always give a negative 
negative cost. Aha, so you always give a negative cost. Yeah, because priority queue returns the maximum of the elements inside. Yeah, 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 I, I, I've I heard... But when we're doing tags, so we need the minimum. Yeah, but like this is the compared. I'm just yeah. Let let's take a look about how the priority queue. I I know that like I'm using all all the time this, but I don't remember why. I don't remember what is the second. Uh, yeah, so there is like a T. There is this what what we are storing. There is the container in which we are storing it. For some reason, it's a vector by default. And then there's the comparator, which is by default less, which returns like the maximum. And then I just put greater here. And in this way, I don't need to store, like I don't have to handle minimums. I just, I mean, I ha handle minimums by the comparison here. And this is as well possible, but yeah, okay. I've heard people do this with like uh, negative signs. I just I just don't like it because you need to keep keep track of <coughs> keep track of what is negative, what is positive, right? What only happens when you do a Q push and Q pop. Yeah, but still, it's it's pain. I always do this and then we can just do like this is the cost and this is the node here. We can pop that from the queue. Have you called it some uh, task in Java uh, any like uh, for, for competitions? Or you you haven't called it. Maybe something can go through. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. Because like I don't know, I tried coding I tried coding something in Java and it was like very, very poor experience overall. <laughs> so I will just here go against all of the edges in my adjacency list of you. And then I need to calculate this um, this thing here. Let me just do a function. I do like a function for if I get uh, if I get an edge and some cost till now. What is my my other cost? What is the cost that? I should get so according to, to our formula here it's the cost plus some constant plus this thing binary search so our result will be the cost plus e dot c right we'll just return this result and then I need to binary search and now binary search I will binary search against so from zero to to D, I need to wait, right? So I have like left is zero, right is at most E dot D. And then I need to calculate this thing here. Uh, what is this thing now? T is, let's say... Oh, mid is T. Yeah, T, T weight, this is T weight, right? Then the whole T is E dot D divided by the cost plus one plus t weight plus t weight and if this is bigger than what uh, but this is not a monotonic farm is it a monotonic 
This is not the... Huh? It, it gonna be... Yeah, but, but that's why we need ternary search, right? How would you binary search this? Huh? I mean, I, I can't, I can't binary search against this, this not a monotonic function. Why not just implement ternary search? I already have a snippet for it somewhere. Because of the, you didn't, oh, ah, it doesn't bear fault, okay. Uh, because of the floating, in ternary search we might get three consecutive same values. No, I, I'm I, I'm doing ternary search with like the the like if I if I get this, I will if I, if this is L and this is R, I do I do like uh, this and this here like uh, one third and two thirds, and this way it won't be consecutive values. If they are consecutive values, it means that it's flat inside. Because it's like, you see? Oh, you move both L and R closer. Uh, and then and then you pick like let's say let's say that this is uh, this is smaller than this, and then you R you switch R to this here. So nice. if nice nice. So in the in this in this way in this way you avoid uh, you avoid this. But I think I have already good snippet for it. I'm just like it's. Can you just uh, initially brute force that, do a for loop, and later you use the snippet? I can just, it's here. I mean... No, no, uh, we want to make sure that our code works. Okay, okay, yes, okay, we can do this. We can brute force for... For probably it's enough just to go to like 100, right, and then... Is it values go up to 10 to the power of 9? Oh, so t, t cannot be more than... So yeah, you can just brute force this, right? Log of 10 to the 9. Right? You don't even need to ternary search it. Is it you correct? You need to go up to greater than 10 to the power of 9, don't you? In worst case? No, why would you do this? Because like, d if, if d is 10 to the power of 9, you would just... If you divide by, oh yeah, yeah. In worst case, you would need to go to the square root. It's not a consecutive division. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true. You, there is no way to pre-calculate this because it depends on the cost. So yeah, it's probably. Yeah, I, I will, I will just. Yeah, I. We can do it to the square root of. 10 to the 9 is about 35,000 just for the problems here. I mean, here doesn't even need that. Right. There. And then best is like the minimum of the best function and call and cost plus e dot c plus e dot d divided by the cost plus one plus i and then what is this now and then plus i right nice. that's that's the best and then we for each edge we say if the distance to the edge dot two is bigger than the distance to to me plus let me just first here define the distance to my starting position which is zero the 
B0 and the uh, the what it was the what, ah, I need to push that right so zero zero and then if that's I will just here have a value what don't you have a check about that where you're reading from the priority queue before traversing all the edges can you have a check uh well technically technically yes but if you don't have a check you would just traverse the edges and see that there's nothing right but that's yeah it's a waste of time i know but technically you would you'd need to do if the uh this that cost is okay. smaller we'll, than we'll, we'll test that then we'll try to solve it with and without it at the end Uh, right it now so when we have it on our mind and later we'll comment it out yeah so if the cost uh, if the cost is smaller than the distance of of yep, you it. if it's bigger than the distance of you. continue yeah then we have this edge here right and then the distance to you plus whatever my cost is then I said it oops so laggy and then you see push my distance and myself okay and this should just I will see out this here as far as I know distances should be negative one then not not maximum or if there is no path it has to print negative one yeah it so if if it is like long long max print minus one else this right nice Yeah, so, okay. Apparently our... Is the, co the cost here, is cost calculated well? Cost plus C plus D over So the where it's definitely taking a wrong path, right? Can we see that? How? Can you take the graph and put it on a graph visualizer? Uh, yeah, I can do it. CS Academy Graph Editor. If it isn't laggy that much what just go there okay zoom now it, please uh yeah i will zoom it i just need to no, no. leave the weight you're deleting the weights too wait i yeah but it doesn't recognize it as a graph you know well, if... i just delete the last value okay and then you need to know you need to go from here to here right move the six on top uh 
Oh, so probably is sixteen Maybe taken. Take a screenshot of this now. Maybe take a screenshot of this and okay. in in your whiteboard just add the the case. What? Paint it is done. Yeah, I can open it right here, right? Wow. What a laggy experience that is. Oh, yeah. It's opened. Let me just post it here. Can you now run the code and print all the distance values? Yeah, yeah. It should we print the distance values here or in the dice itself? In here, probably. Problem. Okay, so from one we okay from zero we have here. Then it goes. Uh, wait, wait uh, that is an edge from one to one. Oh, there is an edge from one to one, but it's it doesn't matter. It's zero. zero. So wait, it, it doesn't matter if there is an edge from one to one. Right. Okay. So there. Okay. So this is zero here distance. Then you go and to the three. There's distance of three. There's distance of four. Then there is a distance of twenty-five here Just for some reason. Find them in any order. Four is ten, six is twenty-four. Uh, ten and twenty-four. But the best path is what? The best path. So let me just put the values here on the yep. edges. So one three is. Two. Wait, so I can better see here. So this is two. Then one five is three. Then five two. Five two is five. Then there is ten. Two to six. There's ten. From five to six, there is hundred. So it's probably this edge should not be taken, right? And there is uh, three to five. There is ten. Three to four. There is four. And three four to two. There is hundred. And ten. So what would be the old, the best path? Probably something like this, this, and this. As far as I see. No. Why? A hundred divided by twenty. A hundred by divided. <laughs> Top of the list. <laughs> Advice. That's from five to six. Aha, uh -huh, so so you go like this, aha, uh -huh, so but you wait here. Oh wait, but what is the optimal solution? How do we get a twenty? Yeah that that that, that is my that is my thing. Isn't the optimal solution something like this? Two, sixteen and one? 
like okay two plus then you have like okay that's not actually that's here that is what like mm, that's two plus one plus then there is 16 so we arrive at the final edge in time at the final node in time 20 Which mean if we came from the two, that would be a time nineteen or how much is ten? Would that? If this is three, then like I have here ten divided uh, by three. That's three. Uh, actually, no. That's that's ten divided by two here and there's like what is this no it's still not the optimal solution still not the optimal solution but what, what we are missing here aren't these tests no these are not these are weak tests here this is probably one good test right so there's no way this This should be correct. In node 5, can't we arrive at times 3? No, we wait. 3 divided by 2, it's 1. Uh -huh, it's, it's 4. Uh, how about node 4? That then doesn't seem right. That 10. That 10 is should be 3 cost three plus here. Three plus 4 over 3. That should be 7. So the, if there is a cost here, 3, then plus 3 plus 4 over 2. Cost plus H cost plus... Can you scroll to the right in the code? That's down, right? Okay. Still? Here? You want E plus yep. ED? Which is 4 divided by 3 plus 1 plus 0 plus 0. 4 divided by 4 should be 1, and the edge cost is 3. The cost is also 3. Yeah, it should be a 7. Okay, let me just, can we print out here what is the, what is the edge 2 value and what is the uh the what is the best cost here just to see the original cost as well yeah we can print that the edge cost too i just want to see here there's three there's wait seven yeah it's <laughs> oh i'm i'm adding the cost twice i see No, I'm not adding the cost. Yeah, I'm adding the cost twice. It should be like this. Nice. Okay, simple bug. Let's see if that works. Okay, that works. So we need now just to turn your search against the Wait, against the values. Does it work? Yeah, yeah. Tests? Yeah, it works. 
can just run the test. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Just now, like ternary search is now here. There should be, I think, bigger than one, right? Because this is no longer. And now I need just to turn research over this function here. Let me just here do this and say what I do is turn search from zero to the from two D, let's say plus one, and then the function that we're gonna turn research against the function is Okay, so ED, okay, so this is long, long, right? And the function is this. I just don't know if it should be positive or negative because I don't know what's the, what should be the ternary search. Yeah, okay, let's see. Um, no instance of turn search matches the argument long, 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 long function, long, long. That should be <laughs> not a long. Plus one long, long? It's a long. Is it? Ah, I see. It's a long. What is the argument types are long, 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 lambda? I'm not sure what's wrong. What's the difference between a function and a lambda? There's nothing different. I mean, lambda is is returns a std function, I think, right? This function has to be std function, and lambda returns that. This, um, oh, so this should be long, long as well, right? I mean, it's a long, long. This expression is long, long. Let me just, instead of T, let me just do long, long here. No, it's still not working. I can just copy paste the code down below. Yeah, I mean, I can do it. It's just isn't. I'm not sure why it doesn't work. It should work. You don't know what? A. what? A is the time. Return F of A. Oh, F of A. Is it uh, F of A? Whoa. Uh, why am I getting segment A? Uh, Yeah, it doesn't mean it doesn't need need uh, actually to be f of a. It maybe it's like minus or plus one. I'm not sure. Can I the just of the neighbor of values? Yeah. Can I do this? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not sure about. Should it be plus one? A plus plus, not I. Yeah, nice catch. At the end of 43. Nice catch. Okay. What? Just make it F and A. That's it, okay. Yeah, this will work again. Okay. 
Okay, that should work unless a is negative. If i is uh, is negative, thing. Okay, that works. Should we submit? I don't know, I'm not, it, it should be, it, the, this is the main, I think Turner is search here, it's like, let me just check here, if this is minimum, then, uh, yeah, okay, this seems correct, seems correct, uh, let's just submit. <laughs> I mean, if you don't have Turner research, probably you can just brute force this, right? I, I think like if you just... What's happening with the judge? Oh, okay. Okay, we got the double, yeah, we got the wrong answer. Uh, I, I mean, you, you can probably just brute force it, right? What, on just seven examples? Come on, like they're special. They're constructed to break this. I have a feeling it's gonna work if you just add like minus five plus five instead of two. Yeah, I have a feeling as well. The thing is, uh, this DI, what if it's. What if it's what? Already less than cost. Can I be zero? Can the value? Yeah, be zero? yeah, def the definitely. Nice. I mean, I, I can definitely be zero. I'm thinking about the form of the right function. Of like, you know, we have di over t plus one plus t. So t is a linear function but di on the left di divided by t okay it's like its form can you can you visualize its form somehow mm, should like in Maybe desmos like, or uh, something can, we, can you return the brute force there and submit it on adcoder to see if we get the wrong answer anywhere yeah i think i can do this like It's about, uh, square root is about 34,000, uh, 34, I think, right? Okay. J j just, can you check that? Can you just use D, uh, item size less than D? Oh, yeah, that that's even, even better, right? And now instead of D, you can also use the original formula. Instead of what? Mm. What was our original formula? The one we started from? That you should be greater than... Yeah, can you use that one instead? But... Oh, so like, uh-huh, okay. But I just wanna... S I just wanna see if we get like this wrong answer. Because if we change too many things, then I don't know. But it should be, it should be greedy. I mean, this could even pass because of the D of D being so small. No, it would be time limit to see that. But it 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 won't. It shouldn't be a wrong answer, right? Let's see. The special case that at the end. Um... 
there's no way I there's no way to be bigger than this, right? No. So it should work. Like if this function is smaller, then we take we change B. If this is, we change A. Come on, it's still judging. Why do they judge? Like, I don't know. Exactly why? <laughs> I mean, probably they can afford it because it's not. Cold forces probably can't afford it, right? But I don't, see, I don't see anything wrong with this here. It's like D over the costs, or like it works in most cases. And it should be greedy. Unless our approach is totally wrong. Come on, like three more cases. Okay, this is constant, this is constant, but this here is not this cost here. Okay, let's see. So they're all TLEs. Even like the special cases are TLEs. What is the difference between this submission and this? So hand. Aha, uh -huh, so okay, it passes on this here. On 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 hand hack three, we get accepted. We get no so on, on hack one we get the wrong answer. But here on hack one we get accepted. Hack. Hack or hand? Ah, I see. Hand one, hand one. It's hand one on here wrong answer, then here it's hand one accepted. So, so something with the Turner research. So yeah, something with this Turner research, yeah. Um, then. Okay, so if this is the case, then like I divide this by by three. Take may maybe maybe I should add like here a little bit more just. And this plus and minus 10, it should be fine, right? If the turn research doesn't get it. I don't see how else would you calculate this, except just If i is smaller than zero, continue. If not, I don't know, it's, some, it's something about the turn research here, but I'm not sure why. 
what's wrong? Can you take that? Okay, that minus ten plus ten. Okay. Uh, Instead of obtaining research, set A to be equal to square root of D minus plus minus 1. Not that, after the term research. Okay, the term after, research. okay, okay. A to be equal to the square root of what? D. Of E to the E D. Dobra. Outside of that, minus C cost minus plus minus 1. Minus plus minus one. Okay. All right. And the ten is reachable. And then you want to search from where? From plus minus ten. Okay, like that. It's fine like this. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. But I'm 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 not sure I'm not sure why it's. it's uh, did you run the local test? Yeah, yeah, I ran, I ran the local right. test. It's fine. I mean, it's still wrong answer. <laughs> I'm not sure what's... Yeah, it's more wrong answers. But the special cases pass. So, it's probably... Um... <laughs> Go ahead. What? Increase this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, like it should still be in time limit. But I mean, technically, wait, minus cost, minus one. Yeah. No, it's wrong cancer again. Ah, we not oh, mm, make it maximum of that and zero. Maximum of what? Maximum of best? Oh, no, a. Oh, a. Negative. Yeah, yeah, I see. Maximum of this and zero. But oh, it's still. And also minimum value of i in there. The starting value of i. Okay. Yeah. Maximum of zero in that. Don't you see it stop compiling? Line 37. Oh. Yeah, it's so laggy that, like, I don't know. Yeah, this seems, this seems... <laughs> okay. <laughs> But okay. wait, can we decrease the hundred now? But wait, was why why make was it like make it one? Make or one. Make it, let's even try directly with a. Best equals the answer to a. Directly Without here. Without the form, yeah. Let's see. No, it's not correct. So, so it's something, it's something, it's something plus or minus one probably, right? Let's see. Yeah, this passes. Yeah. No. How am I gonna explain this? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it's yeah, it's the most uh, optimal inside the 
So if you pick like the, the waiting time. Can I share my screen? Yeah, share it. Share it. So like the, the, the square root of... Yeah, it makes sense why, it makes sense why. Wait, I just... Uh... Let me just, let me just, uh, wait. Where is the, okay. Yeah, now, now they can see you, but let me just watch the stream here. Stop streaming maybe. Okay. I think, I think we can see it. Let me just do it a little bit better. Okay. Yeah, so you have some kind of... Uh... Yeah, this is... Mm -hmm. This thing here is like f1, like function 1 of x, and this will be function 2 of x. Okay, why function 2 is a linear? Uh, is Our the linear function, function was d plus cost plus 1 mm -hmm. plus x would be an L plus x. Okay, so just now here. This cost plus 1 plus x is the value going over here in this x. Mm -hmm. and now, my idea here was that to the left of this, mm -hmm. from here when we have d over 1 to this point when we have d over square root of d, uh, in this interval, the right function always goes up by plus one, right? Moving, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Moving one step to the right, Oops. increases the increases moving the cost. Moving one step right increases by one. Yeah. Okay. While for the other function, moving to the right one step decreases by a lot. Mm -hmm. And this yeah. increasing by a lot is always greater than one until we reach this point. So this, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, but, uh, yeah, yeah, but 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 this is the, this, the, this is uh, the, uh, this fun. This this function actually looks a little bit different, right? Because you when this you this thing here is always greater than one. Now the proof for this. <laughs> I know there is a proof for it, but I don't remember it now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I would like to if we can find that. But wait, w when you when you have this function that is decreasing, right? You have this function. And eventually, that is... just I didn't finish. After this, eventually, moving by one step, sometimes won't decrease the value. It will be less than one, and since we're only peeling down over here. It mm -hmm. won't always. It will never make a step by two. It will never, the, never. The yeah, step yeah, two. yeah, yeah. When yeah. it would be more beneficial to move one step to the right. Yes. And take yes. That decision. Yes. I mean, I understand, but what uh, the square root? And now uh, we want, therefore, we want this part here to be equal to square root of d. And I just did square root of d. To be equal to plus plus one plus mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. x of t of them, mm -hmm. and then we just move these two to the left. That's why we have the minus. Mm -hmm. I did not know about this uh, square, but yeah. So so d over the square root of d is what the square root of d, right? Is it? Yes, it is. So, so this function is the square root of d. So, 
Wait. Okay, let me just... H how do I switch? Yeah, okay. Now, now, now it's okay. Uh, what is the proof for the for this um, decrease? I have no idea how. I mean, probably we can take. So, so, so you're telling that that if I have the square root of d here, a function. Um, I cannot see neither your screen nor your camera on. Discord. Oh, but sorry, 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 sorry. I just turned, point here. turned off the my screen. Okay, you see it right now? Yes, I do. So what's that? Um, when when we have x equals one, d over x is equal to d. And mm -hmm. when x is square root, okay, so then. Yeah, when x is square, yeah, it's yeah, it's square, and then and then and then it goes, it goes, uh, it goes up. Then from that point, it d and d. Then the value d over x. Here it will be d over one, which is d. Here it will be d over square root of d, which is square root of d. Square root of d. And here it will be one. D over d is one. Yeah. Okay. So in this point here, the value goes from d to square root of d. Yes. While moving moving to the right, only square root of d places. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, very this very is small. Much greater than this. Yeah. I mean. Because this is like yeah. d minus. Yeah, yeah, d minus square root of d, which is like huge. That's how much it decreases from all the way there to over here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And now that means if we want to eventually get there, all these steps must be greater than 1. Yeah, so yeah, big more than yeah. It to yeah. move to the right to add plus 1 here when we're actually do, decreasing much more than 1. Yeah, because of the ratio, because of the ratio of this, like d minus square root of d over square root of d, it's like much bigger it decrease than what the, uh, what I'm. Yeah, I think the meter would give us a nice insight here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would. He 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 should be he should be here as well. Yeah. Because I mean, the just the proof that this can be done with, like, with uh, constant time is is nice, and also also I like the the problem because uh, of the of the wait, just to switch over to Martin here. I like the problem because the. It's not clear at the beginning that you can actually do a gradient pro approach here, right? I mean, it depends on the time, so it's not really clear. Next time you see it, now it's gonna be clear. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a ni nice, nice problem. I, I like this. I like this problem so from Ed Calder. It's a nice and and I I hope you're gonna start using this thing, this comparator. Much cleaner. <laughs> or no? Or you just won't give up uh, turning off the turning the sign up and down? I don't know. Maybe I'll start using it then. <laughs> yeah, it just says here greater would cause the small element to appear and stop. Uh, I mean, a nice problem, yeah, yeah. There is probably rush hour one as well, but yeah, we, but we intended to finish the live stream at three thirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's already, it's already, it's yeah. I know, I know. So 
it's already uh, uh, half an hour more. But I hope that I can get you one more, like, I mean, uh, another on another live stream as well to discuss some problems. Maybe maybe problem F at the beginning, unique occurrences was a bit more harder. And maybe we should pick like a topic to discuss uh, some, like to find some cool problems about some specific topic. Let's say, let's say some like contribution technique or some specific topic and then just discuss that, maybe? And also take care of the whiteboards and how we're gonna... Yeah, yeah, it. also, yeah, take, take care of that stuff as well. I, I don't, I don't know what, what actually, why, why, why did this didn't work, but whatever. It's still, we, we, it's, it's our first time and I think it went pretty well. Considering my camera died in the last, what I don't know really? how many minutes. That's why that's why I switched off the, the camera at the Discord because the camera at the Discord is actually the laptop's camera. So the so you just switched the camera as well. <laughs> yeah, the main camera died. The main camera died. <laughs> okay. But yeah, I uh, th thank you guys. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, thank you, Martin, for for being a special guest. Uh, very very cool. Very cool. Very for hosting as well. Uh, yeah. And I hope you guys learned something and I see you in the in the next stream, right?